Grandpa, can we go to Laser Max Family Fun Center this weekend? They're social distancing. Well, the money's a little tight right now, honey. Hey, you want to play laser tag? Let's go out in the yard and I'll chase you around with a flashlight. <laughs> oh! <laughs> hey, man, what's up? Uh, nothing. Just thought I'd drop by and ask you to look out your window. It's a boat. Oh, it is a boat. Your commitment to these practical jokes is impressive. <laughs> uh, it's mine. I just bought it. It took me a minute to convince Anne Marie, but once I got the grandkids to whine at that pitch that makes her crazy, she gave in. <laughs> Good for you. You want some coffee? No, I don't want some coffee. I want you to come look at my boat. I saw it. You want some coffee or not? I want to go see your boat. See, that's how you act when someone gets a boat. <laughs> Come on, get excited, man. We're going to have a blast this summer on Lake Michigan. You know, I'm hoping you and Louise will be able to join us sometime, man. We can cruise around, drink beer. <laughs> Sounds great. Kind of ironic, isn't it? What do you mean? No, I mean, it just goes to show you. <laughs> just goes to show you what? Well, it's funny. how I'm the one that gave you a job, made you a partner in my business, and now you have a boat. And I don't. Who are you, uh, you saying I shouldn't have a boat? No, 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 I'm not saying you shouldn't have a boat. I'm just saying I probably should have had a boat first. <laughs> you know what, Dan? You're right. How dare I have a boat before you? Come on, I didn't mean it like that. Oh, yes, you did. You just didn't know you did. You know, I'll try and remember to stay a step below you, Dan. What are you getting so worked up about? I told you I like your stupid boat. Now sit down and have some coffee. Oh, don't tell me what to do. I don't even know why I came over here. Well, if it's too much for you, we can always get you a milk crate and a stool. No, no, no. It's weird, but it's kind of cool. In the meantime, I've uh, set up some interviews for you so you can hire an assistant. An assistant? Uh, I'm pretty much the kind of person that likes to do everything by myself. Just ask my boyfriend how I am in bed. I do. He said you need an assistant. <laughs> You were 10 minutes late today. I was 15 minutes late yesterday. How about an atta girl? <laughs> so, this is what it's like living inside Robin's butt. Where do you keep the stick? OK, did you come here just to torment me? Mostly, but I'm also here on union steward business. The time clock is five minutes off. So we're getting written up for coming in late. Maybe you people up here could put down your caviar spoons for a minute and come down and fix it. OK, OK, I'll, I'll look into it. Now beat it. I got to interview some assistants. You know, in an interview, you have to pretend to listen to people. All I have to do is look in their eyes, nod periodically, and then, you know, there's the smiling. And that's how the Joker became the Joker. <laughs> Couldn't hold me down, could you, Lanford? Who's the bitch now? Excuse me? Oh, I'm here for the interview? Oh my god, hi, I'm so sorry. I'm Darlene Connor. First question, you still want to work for me after hearing that? No worries, my last flash on a champagne cork out his window and killed a bird. Um, okay, where should we start? Can I sit down? Oh my god, yes, please sit down. <laughs> So, um, 
I'm interested in you. Oh. Uh, what's that you got in your hand? Oh, this is just a little rabbit's foot my daughter Ruthie gave me. If I get this job, she can get her own computer. She's been using the computer at the halfway house down the block, but I'm really not comfortable with her asking the junkies how to spell things. You're hired. Oh, really? No other questions? Oh, God, no, I wouldn't put either one of us through that. <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh, this yeah. is going to be great. Okay. Oh, what do you usually wear to work? Um, I don't know, something kind of like what I'm wearing today. Why? Let me just take a quick photo. That way I can be sure we coordinate. I want people to know I belong to you. <laughs> you always get the last laugh, don't you, Lanford? <laughs> I don't know what you're trying to flatten, but it must be pretty curled to need all those books. Well, I realize that there are some Jeopardy categories I'm not as strong in, so I'm trying to memorize history. Which part? Human. <laughs> hey, can I come in? I've been tested for all sorts of things, but the COVID one is good. <laughs> sure. Jackie. Dwight. <laughs> Chuck asked me to drop this off. What's in it? It's a bill. Chuck is officially breaking up the partnership, and he assumes you're going to keep all the equipment you guys bought, so he wants to be reimbursed for half. Chuck's breaking up your partnership? What happened? I didn't do cartwheels over his dumb ass boat, and he lost his mind about it. He knows I'm struggling to hang on to my house, and he pulls a boat into my driveway? Might as well park it in my behind and call it the SS Take That. <laughs> You know what would show Chuck a thing or two is if you got yourself a new partner, an attractive young one. I'm done with partners. Okay, so we're negotiating. You're offering me nothing. I will take a silent partnership and I'll work for minimum wage. Final offer. That's less than I pay you now. Yes, but I'm a partner. Sounds way better on farmers only. You city girls don't know what you want. Anything you want me to pass on to Chuck? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you can tell him I'll get him his money when I'm damn good and ready. Okay, I'll give him the message. But I don't think I can replicate your ferocity. <laughs> Lisa, can you print the latest production reports and put them on my desk, please? Oh, hey, boss. Do you want me to get Ruthie on her new computer so she can say thank you to her auntie Darlene? Aw, oh, that's sweet, but no. Uh, and I'm not really comfortable with Auntie Darlene. Let's start with Ms. Connor and see where it goes after five or six years. <laughs> Darlene Connor's office. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's Jeanette from sales. Hey, Jeanette. Uh, I, I'm sorry, let me put you on hold for a second. Why is Jeanette screaming at me? She just called me something I only hear in Tarantino films. <laughs> oh, right. You know, she called earlier saying there's a lot of orders coming in and that you need to get on your people to increase their output. I told her that you said your people are working as fast as they can and to get off your back or you'll come down there and kick her ass. What? Why would you do that? Jeanette's just trying to push you around because you're a new boss. You need to shank someone right away to get respect. <laughs> Jeanette? 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 <laughs> well, why don't I come down to your office and we can hash this out, okay? All right, we've got a problem. Are you mad at me? <laughs> no. No, this is your first day, and I should have made it clear that you shouldn't threaten department heads on my behalf. Well, that would have helped. <laughs> my bad. Oh, my God, Twilight! I want to see this. Mary, it's way past your bedtime. What are you doing up? It's hard to sleep with all that's going on in the world. Shh. <laughs> you know what, Josh? I've seen this.